Oh, that's nice. Yeah, you like fucking around on the cut occasionally? Maybe you do, maybe not. Do you like it when it's nice? Do you like nice stuff? Do you like it when it's not so nice? Maybe you don't like it when it's not so nice. Here's something that's beautiful from a distance, but it's not so nice when you get up close. That's because it's in the opuntoid subfamily of the cactus family, and it's got glockids. Like the choyas, it's got those uh, espinas that have the goddamn barbs on them, so they stick to you. This is a species in the genus Cumulopuntia. And again, it's not too nice. It looks pretty nice from far back. It does look pretty nice. But when you get up close and you touch it, that's not so nice. That's not so nice. Ah, oh, yeah. Kind of kind of holds on to your skin. Not so nice. So we're up here now, almost about 8,000 feet in the goddamn northern Atacama Desert. You can see uh, Brunengia is scattered in the distance. Uh, at uh, pretty wide intervals there. Again, completely barren goddamn habitat. Nah, I just said barren again, so I need you to punch yourself on the balls. Here's uh, your figurative balls if you don't have them. It's not, you know, defying the gender binary for all you guys that uh, pay attention to that sort of thing. You know, guys, of course, being non-gender specific too. Punch yourself in the figurative balls. Here we have uh, Hagiosirius chilensis. Okay, growing prostrate. Now that's prostrate, not prostate. Uh, it's got rather long spines. In the you know, I don't think this is in the opuntoid subfamily. I'm going to go ahead and say it's not, because those aerials don't seem to have any glockids in them. Right there, you got what appears to be a species of a triplex, Amaranthaceae. Get a lot of those in the North American deserts, too. This is, it's been a lot easier uh, botanizing here, because there's more of an affinity between uh, South and North America than there is, you know, between uh, North America and Australia, for instance. So when I was in Australia, I had no idea what I'm looking at here. You know, I can tell what family. I've, I've not seen a plant family yet that we don't get in North America. And long spines on it. Look at that guy. Another nice thing to note about this Hagio series is that they all seem to be growing at the base of rocks or around rocks. So this obviously here is collecting the runoff from whatever sparse rain they do get. But also uh, its roots are growing under the rock, which of course protects it from the uh, hot sun, maintains a little bit more humidity, and uh, you know makes for a little bit less transpiration uh, from those root tissues. You know, works out pretty good. Again, Hagio series. Oh, there's a fern, probably a Myriopterus. Does not look healthy. It looks pretty dry. It looks pretty desiccated. Uh, certainly a Pteridaceae, the Xeric fern family. And of course, you can see most of them are just gone. Species of Bacchus, it appears. There's species of uh, coyote bush. You can see nothing's flowering, you know. And this is either a Cystanth or a member of the Isoaceae but it's dead whatever it is. But you can see the, the solanum, the tomatoes are the only thing flowering. That's because they must have very, very deep roots. I mean, roots that must go down uh, quite a few feet because they are, they're doing fine. And this species uh, in particular uh, smells very delightful. You know, I mean, you know how it is you brush up against tomato foliage, leaves of a tomato plant. You can smell it. Oh yeah, it's nice. It's very, very pungent, very glandular. Here's the fruits. And there's so many species of solanum down here. Extremely successful in uh, these most dry of deserts. Oh yeah, so, you know, I'm not sure what this is. It sure seems to be a nightshade though. Extremely, uh, extremely glandular. Possibly another species of Nolana. This one, a yellow one, five fused petals. And again, just the uh, glandular is all hell, you know? It's, I mean, it feels like tobacco leaves. Undoubtedly Solanaceae, undoubtedly a nightshade. Just, you know, growing out, it's a chasmophyte. Chasmophytes, of course, are what you call plants that grow out of fissures and rocks, which this guy is doing. Oh, look at this. Could this possibly be a Balbizia, Francoaceae? Look at this guy.
So what you got going on here, very highly reduced foliage. Of course, I can expect that being and it doesn't want to reduce that surface area to leaf. You got the, oh, an exquisite calyx. Almost looks like an uh, evening primrose calyx. Of course, this is not that. And uh, you look in the center there, you got uh, quite a few stamens and then a five-lobed stigma. And just the it's flowering, it's flowering like hell. Well, you know, so much other stuff is dry. Look at these. Look at this imbricate. Look at this foliage right here. Look at it. Almost like a rose. Not worth mentioning, here's a species of ephedra. Of course, that a compound, the pseudoephedrine, was uh, synthesized, I believe, after a, a molecule found in this. It's a little bit of an upper. You can make a tea out of this, and of course, it'll get you going. No, it's not really so pleasant, though. I'll take just a, I'll take a cup of coffee over this. Any day, you can see, not not quite a flowering plant. Very weird uh, branch on the uh, family tree of uh, photosynthetic life right here. In the same uh, order, I believe, as uh, Wellwichia. The famous weird ass Wawichia of Namibia, of the fog deserts of Namibia. Ephedra, I believe, is uh, mostly uh, from the Americas. I think there might be a couple species in Asia, too. But uh, you can see no leaves. Uh, very weird and somewhat primitive re reproductive structure right there. Anyway, here we are stopped in the middle of the road. They're somewhat obscuring traffic, but I talked to them. They said it's fine. They don't mind. Anyway, look at this. Uh, again, another species of cystanth. Again, beta lane pigments. Look at the look at the pigmentation in this. Look at that color red. Compare the color red you see here with the color red you'd see in, say, a rose. Okay? Only plants in the, the order of beets and cacti, caryophyllales, produce beta lane pigments. All right? And see those tiny little flowers, tiny flowers. Most of that coloration there is from actually from the bracts. The cystanth has been very successful in uh, the high desert here. You can see it's also got the succulent uh, too. Montiacea, same family as bitterroot, Luisia, Luisia. If you're a fan of brevity, there you go. Fucking nice cystanth. Race to nowhere. Go get them. Go hurry up. Hurry up. 104 kilometers from Bolivia. Anyway, growing here on the dirty side of the road, the dirty and dusty side of the road is a member of the sunflower family, but it's one of the more basal lineages. It's a very odd uh, member of the sunflower family. It's uh, one of the earlier branching lineages, and it uh, <laughs> these are not leaves. They're I mean I guess they are technically leaves, but they they feel more like spines. They're leaves that have been modified into spines. Very abrasive. Very sharp, pointed, somewhat painful to touch. This is Chucky Araga. And uh, something smells pretty good. I don't know if it's this guy or what, but uh, might be that guy. I don't know. Let's take a look at this Corolla, though, or this uh, Sudanthium. Is a more proper term. Sudanthium capitula, basically just an aggregation of tiny flowers that resembles one large flower. You can see, look at those Corollas. You can see the styles poking out there. Uh, how many lobes those Corollas got? Five? Yeah, they got about five. I've been wanting to see this genus for a long time. I, I believe they're all pretty high elevation. I believe these are in the Barnadesia subfamily, uh, which, uh, again, uh, stands alone. It's the lone branch on the sunflower family tree. Uh, this subfamily lacks the uh, 21,000 base parent version that the entire rest of the sunflower family has. So there you go, Chucky Araga Spinosa. It's fucking remarkable. What a beautiful plant. And it's kind of mean, too. And I like it. Just uh, flowers entirely discoid. No rays. No ligules. Elongated corollas. And it looks like they got a little bit of pappus there, a.k.a. the dandelion fuzz uh, that, that, that tops the akeen, the individual one-seeded fruits. 
Oh yeah, this guy smells pretty good. Almost looks like he might be in Bourbon ACA. Tiny ass flowers in a rather uh, woolly inflorescence. How do you like the smell of uh, exhaust and tire dust? Kind of reminds me of uh, Southern California. Fucking mouthful of diesel. Anyway, here's another sustain. Real succulent. Real succulent and juicy. A lot more showy. Look at those flowers. Holy shit. Yeah, that'll make you not feel like dying for a little while, huh? How about that? There you go, another soil recessive cactus. Who doesn't love them? This is Neo Wordermania chilensis. Easy to miss. You just kind of got to spot the geometry and the uh, fractal patterns and what the shit while you're walking over it. You know, there's there's quite a few uh, we just passed. But uh, anyway, it's got a thick taproot. Uh, might be. I think this might be a monospecific genus. I don't know. Pink flowers, real banger. And again, just uh, just hiding out. Flowers. This is a genus I've been wanting to see for a long time. Oh yeah, that's sharp, it kind of hurts. And then over here you got a Cantolipia tarapacana in the Verbenaceae family, same family as Lantana. And this is in the order of uh, Salvia and Mint, the Lamiales. So different family, but same order. And it smells pretty good. Look at that foliage though. Super bundled together. And you got some nice woody tissue down there. So it's a perennial shrub. This plant's probably, I don't know, 10, 20 years old. And again, it smells it smells pretty nice. It smells pretty fragrant and pleasant. You know, which is, oh yeah, holy shit, it does. Woo! Which is nice, because, you know, I've just been smelling a diesel exhaust being right next to the goddamn road. Diesel exhaust and a tire dust. And then right here, you got a nice member of the pea family. And a desmia, probably a desmia out of commensis. Race to nowhere. Banner wings and keel, Phoboidea subfamily, the banner of course being that posterior back pedal, the keel uh, being the uh, pedal that uh, encloses, two fuse pedals that enclose the anthers and uh, the style. This, this bastard's pretty glandular too. Real sticky. Okay, so at an elevation of about 11,000 feet, I almost uh, feel a little dizzy. We got a couple interesting plants here. Here we have a uh, relatively small uh, uh, tree. This is a member of the rose family. This is Polylepis rugulosa. Get up there, look at the foliage. Nice, very tomatose and fuzzy, uh, adapted to the high elevation and the very cold nights. You can see it's got very shaggy bark right there. And then over here, we got a... Uh, Jesus Christ, are those, are those are the fucking flowers, I guess, huh? Yeah, those are the flowers. So you got multiple stamens. Uh, I don't see any petals. Just those three. Uh, like it's those. I guess those are petals. They look just, they, to me, they just look like bracts. Three little bracts, multiple stamens, and then, of course, heavily uh, pubescent in a tomentose foliage right there. Typical uh, rose family. You don't got a don't gotta smooth margin on that leaf. It's a little uh, cut up. It's a little dentate. Almost like a strawberry leaf, uh, which of course is in the same family. I'm guessing these. Uh, I'm guessing these guys can live probably uh, very long. You know, I, don't, I can't. I can't imagine much messes with them up here. Well, look at the abaxial surface of that leaf right there. So fuzzy. Nice indumentum. And then over here we got a nice member of the nightshade family. Just lit up. Nice little dangly flowers. Here you go, Dunalia spinosa. Tubular corolla, long tubular corolla, five fused petals, five stamens. And of course spinosa because it appears to have modified some of its branches into spines. And the foliage appears to be heavily glandular. Maybe a little, a couple hairs on her. Oh yeah, it's hairs, it's hairs and glands. And then uh, behind me, we got a real nice colony of Oreo Sirius, which I'll, uh, a beautiful little uh, 
fuzzy old man cactus I'll show you here in a minute. It's another uh, diminutive aster. Over here we got another discoid uh, perennial woody aster. This is uh, appears to be probably a species of uh, peristrephia. Coming up right next to this uh, nice irrigation ditch. They really did a nice job with the irrigation ditch. I'm going to have to go ahead and wash my ass in this before we leave. Hope nobody's drinking of it out of it downstream. More tobaccoris. Yeah, somebody started a small brush fire. That's nice. God, who doesn't love polylepis, huh? You know, I guess this is this is almost like uh, the uh, Chilean equivalent of our uh, native uh, California circle carpus. And here's here's the bark. Here's, here's you know after you, you get away from uh, you know you get a nice specimen of polylepis, you get away from all the the foliage and whatnot, a rather aging spe specimen. You could check out that. Uh, the bark on it it's pretty incredible it's just it's papery bark just you know occurring i mean fuck it's it's very thick probably probably uh i'd assume because it gets uh, so cold here at night i mean <clears throat> we are at eleven thousand feet I want to protect that vascular tissue from freezing it acts as kind of an insulation i mean it's just that's wild that's nice look at that it's a beautiful goddamn that's a beautiful tree there's a nice uh, specimen of cumula punch. We're higher, so everything's got a little bit more hydration in it. You get a little bit more moisture. Doesn't get as hot. And then here we got a real nice big jammer. This is Oreo Sirius, the old man cactus. Pretty uh, somewhat large genus. Look at these guys. They just they got the fuzzy tops, which of course helps reduce uh, the uh, ultraviolet radiation, as well as uh, probably protecting those. Uh, Epical growing tips from uh, frost. It's a rather large colony over here. Look at this. Anyway, there's a flower. An old flower. And again, these are just, just trichomes, just the uh, you know, mostly probably to uh, deal with the sun. I mean, we're up here at 11,000 feet. There's much less atmosphere. The sun's a lot more intense. You know, my Italian ass, I tend to be a little brown. And I've already uh, I've already burnt the shit out of my arms. I'm not wearing a long sleeve like I should be. Anyway, there you go. Oreo Sirius, possibly Leucotrichus. Just looking like a big fuzzy octopus. Just dangled over the goddamn side of this uh, little impromptu stone wall right here all right here's another at desmi remember that's a obviously a faboidea subfamily the uh papilionaceous flowers of the uh fabaceae the pea family it's the largest subfamily remember and uh, this one has very diminutive leaves tiny flowers diminutive leaves and then branches that have just been kind of utilized as spines all right, coming up at the base of this Desmia, you know, pretty in inconspicuous, pretty easy to miss if you're not paying attention. We have uh, one of the soil recessive cacti, and it's got the prominent tubercles. Almost looks like an aerocyce, but this is Neowertomania chilensis. You can see, it almost looks like it's uh, either about to flower or done flowering. And again, it's just, it's got those uh, very dark betalane pigments. You know, almost looks black. The tissue on this almost looks black. And again, these have a huge, huge taproot. I mean, this thing probably goes maybe a foot into the ground. You know, I guess what really, it, it's really like a stem. It's more like a stem that uh, recesses into the ground and then, uh, you know, switches over to root, root further deep, uh, further deep down in that, uh, further deep down on the ground right there. But again, look at those uh, tubercles. Again, looks so much like an aerial size. Probably very closely related to aerial size. And easy to miss. You really got to wonder about some of the plants up here. I mean, the ultraviolet radiation is so much more intense at uh, higher altitudes. And so, you know, these plants, they must uh, be a little bit more adapted to it than uh, plants at the lower elevations.
Here we go, Neo Word of Mania. This is a larger one. It's actually got some fruit on it too. Just little berries. They look like little mammalaria berries. And this one's actually sticking out above the ground. It's not recessed in like uh, many, many of the other ones. But again, it's just a, <laughs> a phalanx of spines you got to get through if you want to get at that fruit, if you're a little rodent or whatever this shit. Maybe a bird. You know, I bet a bird could do it. A little plump little bastard. Anyway, I wonder how old that guy is. But I uh, broke that fruit open. Totally dry inside. Almost no, uh, none of the mealy stuff. Sprinkle these seeds over on the moss mat. A lot of the cacti I like to, uh, they seem to like to germinate on the moss mats. And maybe the moss mats are crypto games. Oh, look at that. That's a nice trifecta. You got some Cordideria, a.k.a. The uh, genus of pampas grass, got some polylepis, rose family, rosaceae. Again, southern hemisphere equivalent of our circocarpus, long-lived, high elevation growing, uh, relatively slow growing, growing member of the rose family. And then back there, you got the nice Oreo Sirius, just a phalanx of Oreo Sirius, looking like the old man, the old uh, Viejo cactus. That's pretty nice, up at 11,000 feet in the goddamn Andes Mountains. Oh, yeah, and a Barnadesia subfamily. Remember, that's a, a, a early branching uh, lineage, early branching branch in the Asteraceae family tree, the sunflower family tree. Here we got a plant that in a genus I've been wanting to see for a long time. This is Chukiuraga, and this is Chukiuraga spinosa. Look at that. Look at those goddamn leaves. Look at it. Strigose hairs, just covered in strigose hairs, reflecting at high altitude, uh, ultraviolet light, and then, of course, uh, no ligules. No legules, no rays. A good, nice uh, series of uh, filleries right, though. It's a nice series of filleries. And then, of course, you got those styles just poking out. I mean, it, this is fucking such a weird plant. I mean, it's, it is. It's basically, you know, one of the... Uh, it's a version. It's a current version of one of the primitive models of the sunflower family. There's more up there. It's, it's a fucking... That's what you'd call a banger or a ripper if you're in Australia. Look, you got more going on up there. The leaves, I mean, the leaves complement that beautiful red. Aesthetically, it's pleasing, but evolutionarily, it's very, uh, very pleasing as well. And then, of course, you got the whole ecology of growing in the fucking 12,000 feet up, you know, and just covered in spines. Got a couple different uh, interesting things going on. You got the Chucky Araga to my left, then you got this bastard with these stinging hairs in a family Lois Aceae, the Blazing Star family, the Rock Nettle family. Here's a species of Loasa. It appears to be a vine. And uh, there's one of the flowers up there, those little orange bastards. And then uh, further up this is sketchy embankment. We have a species of Muticia, which is another one of the uh, earlier branching lineages of the sunflower family, Asteraceae. Uh, the flowers uh, look like shit, being that they're dead, but uh, you can see the foliage. It's got that pinnate, almost pinnate foliage. I mean, it is pinnate foliage. These are real. Muticia is a pretty big genus. And again, it's uh, one of those earlier lineages. Not quite as early as that uh, Chucky Raga, but it is uh, it's big enough. And it's an orange flower when it's going off, but I can't see any going off. Oh, look at all the moss. That's pretty cool. That's pretty nice. Don't you like moss, huh? You like getting slapped around with it? You want me to slap you around with some moss? Holy shit. And then here's that Tsukiraga again. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that hurts. I'm basically in the bush. And yeah, it kind of hurts. Looks like those might be stipules that have been modified into a spines. So, anyway, Chucky Uraga. What a beautiful genus, huh? High elevation and these mountains. South America, of course, being the origin and the epicenter of diversity for the sunflower family. Hard to believe that this goddamn plant is a relative of sunflowers. Oh, yeah, look at it. Look, look, see, see the breaks, see the phyleries. Look at the breaks. Look at the uh, nice involucre. That's a beautiful plant right there, huh? All right, why don't you go fuck it? And there you go. There's that flower in that Lawasa. Lois Sacia Blazing Star family. God damn, even <laughs> even the petals are covered in a looks like urticating hairs. Little stingers. You like being urticated? Would you let me urticate you? 
Jesus Christ, look, fuck. <laughs> this is, you know, Manzilla is nice compared to this one. This fucker looks mean. And got kind of a scandent, a scandent habit. Ooh, ooh, look at his sepals. Look at Kalis.